It's a cold, drizzly day in Chicago, but I am here for one reason alone, and that is to test Verizon's newly launched 5G network. I'm standing outside the Verizon store on Michigan Avenue, and I've got the Moto Z3 with the 5G Moto Mod. That is what gives this phone 5G power. So far, Verizon has launched 5G in two cities, here and in Minneapolis, but by the end of 2019, 5G will be in 30 cities. That's Verizon's promise. Starting off small in urban areas, then it will later expand. So we're not gonna get 5G everywhere. And since this is early days, we honestly don't know what kind of coverage we're going to get. But we do get to try it out, which is really exciting. And we can expect that over time, it will only get better. We've got the phone all day, so we're gonna go around the city and see what kind of 5G speeds we can get. But first, we're gonna go inside the store for some speed tests. Let's go. So I've already been in the Verizon store for more than an hour and a half, sitting right under the 5G node, which means that it's supposed to be a really fast, great connection. However, right now, this photo is in 4G. It keeps popping in and out of 5G, and I have to keep going into airplane mode to try to trigger 5G. So I haven't been able to get a clean comparison test. I'm gonna keep trying. All right, we're ready for round two of our testing. I'm here at the Merchandise Mart, which also happens to be the headquarters for Motorola. Behind me on that pole, outside of the Shamrock Club, is another 5G node, so I'm hoping we get a little bit luckier with speeds here. Again, it was the same situation. On speed test, we got some pretty good speeds sometimes, but then when we went to download an actual app, PUBG, which is a very large app, it took six minutes. So now PUBG Mobile is almost completely installed on the exact same Moto Z3. I've just taken off the 5G Moto Mod. It doesn't look like we were getting 5G speeds before. This is the same download time. By this point, it's after lunchtime. It's getting to be kind of late. So we go to two more nodes. The first one was right outside the Chicago Art Institute. And again, standing right underneath it, service was kind of flickering, the rain was coming down, definitely got those 5G speeds on the speed test, but when I went to download a Netflix episode, it completely stalled. And then I took off the Moto Mod, thinking, okay, well, there's no possible way that it's gonna actually be faster on 4G, but we gotta check, and that was completely stalled too. So I don't know what was happening. The last spot we tried was a couple blocks away from the famous Chicago Theater, and again, standing right underneath it, go through the whole song and dance. But this time, I can't connect to the 5G network at all. I tried everything. I toggled the airplane mode on and off at least four times. I rebooted the phone. I took off the mod. I put it back on. I was kind of at my wit's end. I just sort of gave up. Then I realized later that my mod was at 0%, which means I'm not gonna connect to the 5G network at all, even if I were standing right underneath it and there were absolutely no problems with that node. So how did it go today? Not very well, actually. It was more like a wild goose chase. We were out shooting for four hours with the phone in the rain, it was cold. We were trying really hard to get a connection. We had to be outside because that's where the nodes were. Whenever you have a new kind of technology launching, you expect that there are gonna be some rough spots along the road. And remember, this network is one day old, so I wasn't expecting this to be like amazing speeds with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Um, but it was basically and completely an utter disaster and failure, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> if you looked at me at the beginning of the day, you know, I was full of hope and energetic, and now I just feel like this haggard, worn out mess <laughs> after all that I've been through. So to understand the problems that I had with the mod in our last attempt, we have to understand the mod itself. It's got its own 2000 milliamp battery and it's got four antennas all around it. Those are somewhat demarcated by these oblong circles. Those are actually infrared sensors and if you're blocking one with your hand by holding the mod, you're not going to get a 5G signal through that antenna. So this is a good thing. This is supposed to help you reliably get your 5G signal. When the mod connects to the phone with these 5G pins on the bottom, it's transferring the data to the phone. However, uh, the mod has its own battery, it's got its own battery charger, it is not transferring battery. So if you run out of battery on the mod, you're not going to get that 5G signal. You might think that it would make a lot of sense for the phone and the mod to share battery resources, but Motorola didn't want to do that in case the mod sucked out the battery life of your phone. Well, if they both died, then you wouldn't be able to make calls on 4G or use the phone at all. So that part does make sense. 
However, the main problem that I had was that I needed a neon sign telling me that I was running low. There is an indicator in the notifications tray, and uh, apparently Motorola has also included some sort of ephemeral message on the screen, but then that goes away. There's no separate battery indicator for the mod like there is for the battery indicator for the phone. So you really can't tell by glancing at the screen what the battery life on the mod is. And if you're hitting this pretty hard with a lot of downloads and a lot of streaming, you're gonna hit those battery reserves faster, just like you would using the regular phone. Part of the reason that I didn't see this message is because I was running around trying to get 5G. And I think that, you know, if you're a person who has your phone in your pocket, in your purse, you're not necessarily gonna see those messages when they appear. I think this is a challenge for Motorola. How are you gonna communicate with people when that battery life on the mod is low? There's gonna be a customer expectation that you're paying more for the service, you're paying for the mod, that since you're paying for it, you should have 5G access all the time. I think at the end of the day, all of these trials and tribulations we had underscores where 5G is. This is a nascent technology. Uh, there are going to be some stumbling blocks along the way. And all of these companies, Motorola, Verizon, all of the other network providers, they're playing the long game. 5G is going to be with us for a decade until the next G, right? Possibly even more. So these are things that they're going to work out. I'm not giving them a pass. Today's experience was really frustrating and it was frankly really terrible. And based on it, I can't go out and recommend that anybody go buy a 5G phone right away. But I do think that we are going to see changes down the line. A year from now, is everybody going to have a 5G phone? No, absolutely not. Uh, not all of the cities are going to have coverage. Not all areas of the cities are going to have coverage. If you live somewhere uh, more in the outskirts, you're probably definitely not going to have that for a while. You'll still have 4G and the networks are going to be building out 4G alongside 5G. So your 4G should be faster. And that's something that we saw today. We didn't always get 5G speeds, but some of the 4G speeds were speedier. In addition, it was a big deal for Motorola and Verizon to be able to have a 5G phone ready for when the network turns on, but this isn't the design that you want to have. This is extremely kludgy. Nobody wants an add-on. This is something that the phone makers are working on, Qualcomm's working on it. There's a brand new chip uh, that's not in this device or in the first wave of devices, but around holidays uh, 2019, the phones are going to be thinner and they're going to work a lot better across multiple carriers. So you're not going to want this first wave, the second wave maybe, the third wave even even after that, but you're still looking at at least one to two years out before you get a really satisfying 5G experience. I think that if you're on the cutting edge, you're an early adopter, and you really want those speeds, there are gonna be some immediate advantages as we've seen with some of the uh, successful speed tests today. So if you really wanna download something fast, you're going to be able to do that. Not today, but in the future. In the future, there are gonna be a lot more 5G phones to choose from, and as time goes on, that will be our only choice. We're not gonna even have a lot of 4G options, same as when we switched over from 3G to 4G in the first place. But after today, I can say, honestly, it could only get better from here.